modern icon painting in the Ukrainian Orthodox tradition, creativity that requires observing countless rules and canons. A Ukrainian icon painter who does everything possible to popularize this art. UATV visited the master in his workshop, where sacred images are created for temples and private collections. Why did fish become a symbol of Christianity? Many think that it happened under the influence of fishermen apostles. Others will recall that, according to the New Testament, Jesus Christ miraculously fed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. Another interpretation in the ancient Greek language is that the first letters of the word fish, ictis, are formed in the acrostic Jesus Christus, son of the God Savior. But whatever the version is, another thing is important is that fish became a symbol of the recognition of early Christians. The new religion first existed underground, and any unencrypted inscriptions or images would cause problems with the ruling Roman authorities. In the catacombs, where the first divine services were held, archaeologists found pictures of fish as well as anchors, boats, and grape vines. All this had a very symbolic meaning for people of that time. The Byzantine Emperor Constantine the Great made Christianity the official religion. And in order for Christianity to be introduced, it had to become accessible to the public. So the encrypted symbols were no longer suitable. Several church ecumenical councils developed and consolidated the canons of icon painting, which have survived to this day. If it is customary to erect statues of saints in Western Christianity, believers of Eastern Orthodoxy pray before icons as they did a thousand years ago. While many Christians do not realize how these images are created, a Ukrainian artist wants to change this belief. I paint modern icons in the Byzantine style and teach other people to master this very intricate form of art. Officially, Volodymyr Kostyuk is the head of the National Union of Icon Painters of Ukraine, but in fact, he is an enthusiastic painter who tries to inspire others with this art in every possible way. He established his own school where he teaches people who do not have an artistic education and are not influenced by the church. Many people even do not know that they can also learn icon painting. They are not aware that it is open for everyone because they believe that only monks can paint icons. How did Volodymyr Kostyuk venture to exchange police epaulets for brushes and paints? What technologies must be followed to paint an impressive icon? And why is the color of pleats on a saint's clothing so important? Further in the program all about modern icon painting in Ukraine. Icons and any reproduced images of Jesus Christ were not always considered acceptable. In the time of development of icon painting in Byzantium in the 8th century, there was a movement of iconoclasts. Christians insisted that the images of the Son of God and the saints were idolatry or blasphemy in accordance with the Ten Commandments. It got to the point that icons were removed from the temples. But in the end, the Church's point of view that the Savior image is the same as His words written in the Bible prevailed. In short, it was a way to convey the essence of faith and pacify people's perception that it was an idol. Much later, in the 20th century, the Orthodox Church suffered huge damages from new iconoclasts, the Bolsheviks, and was revived only in the late 1980s. My grandmother fostered in me her love for reading the Bible. By the eighth grade, I had already read the Old and New Testaments. At that time, I was also interested in pictorial art, so I attended a children's art school where I learned to paint. It is possible that Volodymyr would have started painting icons already at that time, but he did not fulfill his dream. My father is a police officer. He gave me an order that was not up for discussion. I took my father's advice. He said I would not be able to support my family by painting, so I followed in his footsteps. Volodymyr obeyed his father, but he had no desire to work as a police officer. I most of all liked handwriting examinations. So I worked for many years in my profession at the State Central of Judicial Expertise. The future icon painter verified the signatures on important documents for their authenticity. Sometimes Volodymyr had to verify the authenticity of suicide notes, because handwriting tells much about the emotional state of a person. In this way, Volodymyr was promoted to the rank of chief of police. I felt that at one point in my childhood I buried my talent in the ground, so I felt uneasy and thought that I had not lived life to the fullest. One incident helped him rediscover his talent as a true artist. 
Volodymyr was offered to become a godfather, so he wanted to present a dimensional icon to his godson. First, I wanted to order such an icon from icon painters, but they said they would not be able to paint it in time. That's why I asked them what paints and gold they used and what I had to do so that they could do the job properly. In the end, I painted this icon by myself, and I had some free time. Some time later, I started to study icon painting in great detail. Especially for UA TV channel, Volodymyr Kostyuk shares his knowledge about icon painting, explains the meaning of different details in the icons, and tells how they are made. How it is made. The main discovery for Volodymyr when he painted his first icon as a picture is totally different. The drawing skills that he preserved meant little without the knowledge of the symbolic context and motivation. He understood that a run-of-the-mill painter is nothing close to an icon painter. Technically, a painter can make a good copy of an icon, but reverend priests say that an icon will not be genuine without personal spiritual practice of the icon painter. It can be a decoration in the temple, but people will not wish to say a prayer before such an icon. There's a little space for creativity, so Volodymyr explains several details using the antique icon of the Mother of God of the mid-19th century as an example. For example, this fabric is called homophorian. Red color in iconography symbolizes blood and sufferings. This indicates sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The brown color symbolizes ashes and everything perishable. In this case, it indicates the earthly origin of the Virgin Mary. That is, even plates on the clothing of the Mother of God cannot be of any color. This is a gross mistake in accordance with centuries-old canons. There are a lot of fixed details like these in each icon. So at the initial stage of learning, an icon painter can't allow oneself free interpretation. Only a true master can allow the use of small variations of colors. The first stage of icon painting is preparation of a wooden base. For this purpose, we need a so-called wooden shield. This is a laminated built-up board made of resinous wood spaces, which are attached to each other with the help of splines. Nowadays, they are made by carpenters, but an icon painter should simply know how to make the board. The wooden base has to be long-lasting in order for it to be kept in a house or in a temple for hundreds of years. An image on fragile material is not considered an icon. A special hollow, or a so-called arc, is cut on the front of the board. The sidelines of the board symbolize the earthly world, while the arc symbolizes the celestial world. That is the frame of the board, and sidelines of the board form a window into the world of sacred images. But the rules of icon painting are not violated. On orthodox icons, there is nimbus outside the frame, but this does not mean the icon painter made a mistake. The nimbus is a symbol of holiness that extends to the sacred and earthly world, so painters often paint a nimbus outside the frame. Besides, the holy space inside the ark has to be scratched with an awl in order to attach the piece of the dense linen fabric which is affixed on top with the application of hot glue. To make a canvas, we prepare a special soil. In iconography, it is called gesso, from the Greek word white. It is made of chalk, pure powder and glue of animal origin. This soil includes flaxseed oil and honey. Before coloring, you need to apply 15 layers of gesso, followed by drying. The process takes two weeks. By this time, the icon painter should have prepared paints that should only be of natural tempera in a powder form. This is a very important part of the process. Besides that, you should use clay, sand and earth of different colors. Then this powder is poured on a surface, it can be a stone slab or matte glass. After that, water is added. You should also make sure that coarse particles do not fall on the surface to avoid staining the color purity. 
чуть-чуть вы слышите звук такой. If you can hardly hear the sound of sand falling on glass, it means that this paint has a small content of sand. Вот растираем до того. We rub up the paint until we cannot hear the sound of sand. Песка, да? Эти э, пигменты не These pigments do not fade and they will preserve this color for hundreds of years. All ancient icons are painted with such paints. After that, an icon painter puts the rest of the paint in a box, but if you apply it on a canvas at once, then as it dries it can turn into a powder again and crumble. That is why a thousand years ago people invented a natural emulsion to preserve the paint. There are different ways and recipes for the preparation of this special emulsion. We make it using chicken egg yolks and dry white wine. The paint looks greasy, and when it dries it is preserved, that is, it does not crumble. Thus, the colored symbols in Egyptian tombs and Orthodox icons have the same secret of longevity. Finally, we can start painting the image. It starts with the drawing on clothing and the background in a sketch and then it is done in colors. The first stage is making of a substrate, that is, the entire surface of the gesso is covered with a transparent ochre. After that, the disclosures or opening are made and we apply the main colors, shades and fabric to the icons. For example, we paint a some kind of a red mantle. All of this is done in accordance with the symbolics of the canons. Gradually, plates and small details appear on the clothing. Besides that, an icon painter has to create the effect of bright divine light that falls on the entire image. You've probably noticed that light in the icon is not very smooth. It is rather in the form of different triangles and rays of light. We try to breathe life into the icon. Only after that the icon painter starts painting the most difficult elements, the face and hands of the saint. The icon should be perceived as a miraculous image that was created by a higher being. And in order to achieve this effect, painters have to violate the canons of ordinary painting. After all, most painters typically paint the face of a saint with dark spots, rather than light ones. Just as the world was created from darkness to light, so the face and icons are painted. Facial features, eyes, nose, lips, eyebrows may seem primitive, but in reality it is a stylization, and a painter just needs to depict this in their works. Of course, an artist can copy a saint's face from another icon, but all the same he or she needs practice. Remembering his first experience in icon painting, Kostuk developed his proprietary technology for beginners. He tries to show that you can reproduce an ancient image with just a few strokes and easily create painting of an icon. During 16 lessons, a painter learns to make the first step. This is a good thing. They paint an icon in an intensive regime and then we analyze their mistakes in the first icon. After the painter has finished the second icon, we analyze its quality and the time it took. Then an artist sees the first positive result of their work and has inspiration. Over a period of several years, about 250 people graduated from his art school. He also offers several online courses in which one can learn the process of painting icons, including gilding. The master does not require that his understudy has to be a believer. The main thing for an icon painter is not only frankness, but trying to seek the truth. Such a person is like a tabula rasa and they need help. They make their first steps towards faith through iconography. Such a person paints icons and thinks about what they are painting. Recently one interesting story happened to me. I visited a temple. One of my pupils came up to me and said, Thank you, Vladimir. Today I had the first communion thanks to iconography. Today, icons by Vladimir Kostyuk are decorations in many temples. Upon his initiative, icon painters from all regions of Ukraine take part in different exhibitions and meet with foreign masters who came to Ukraine to share their invaluable experience. This means that the creative process that began half a thousand years ago continues in spite of all possible obstacles.